Uh, so, all right. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Dr. Mohan, one of the co-chairs for uh, Sick Dogs um, in the Kubernetes project. Uh, this is the monthly APAC-friendly meeting for uh, Sick Dogs, where contributors from the APAC region can tune in and uh, provide updates, ask about issues or concerns or voice concerns that they may have about contributing to the project. Uh, specifically in the docs side of things. Um, and um, so as with every other project meeting under the Kubernetes project, this one's also governed by the Kubernetes code of conduct, which boils down to just being nice to one another um, and being courteous to one another uh, whenever we are interacting um, in spaces that are governed by uh, the code of conduct. Uh, this includes events, meetings, Slack channels, um, chats, etc. So um, if you notice any violation or if you are experiencing a violation of this code of conduct, uh, please feel free to report it um, to the Code of Conduct Committee, which is, uh, um, you know, the there's an email list um, uh, uh, with the code at the rate kubernetes.io um, uh, where you can report this violation and uh, appropriate action will be taken. So that's, that's the basic first housekeeping that um, we start our meeting with. Uh, Next, we move on to uh, new contributors. I know that Evan, uh, you here. I don't know if you've attended any of the previous SIG Docs meeting, which gets held in early Pacific time. But uh, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? There's no pressure if you don't want to. Uh, but do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I can. Uh, I did attend, I think, uh, one or two SIG Docs meetings, uh, mostly the bi-weekly ones. I'm not sure if I attended the APEC ones, but that was like uh, not regularly last year, but then I con started contributing to uh, Sick Country Vex for like six months now. So I'm involved there. Uh, I'm the blogging shadow under Frederico, uh, also the social media shadow under Kesslin. And then currently I'm working as the KCS uh, NA com shadow. Uh, yeah, that is all about me in the Kubernetes project. I just uh, noticed you put out a message uh, in the in-dev channel. So I thought of joining uh, SIG Talks and see uh, what works, uh, what work takes place here. That's that's great. Welcome. Um, And we hope you can stick around and find something to contribute to if that's your aim. Um, mm -hmm. We'll now move on to the updates and reminders because I don't think anyone else has joined the call. Um, so the basic, um, uh, you know, flow of this meeting is that we, um, have, um, the new contributor bits in, uh, new contributors introduce themselves and then we move on to, uh, announcing the PR rank loss and, uh, issue rank loss for the, um, uh, next cup, uh, for this week and the next couple of weeks. Um, so as is practice, so uh, this week's PR rank law is Natalie Vladko, uh, another co-chair, um, and she's being shadowed by Nathan. Um, I'm next week's PR rank law, and I am being shadowed by uh, TuneDev. And uh, uh, the week of KubeCon, if I'm not mistaken, or the week before that, uh, Xander's um, the PR rank law. Um, in case anyone's interested, in becoming the shadow, uh, in by shadow I mean you know, uh, learn by experience, uh, what PR wrangling is. Um, make sure you reach out to either one of us leads or co chairs to uh know your schedule p uh not to know your schedule but to schedule uh, a PR wrangling shadow shift under an upcoming PR wrangler. Um, this if you're interested, this will help you gain more um insight into the process of PR wrangling and uh, how we approve and review PRs and SIG docs. So if that's of interest, please do get in touch with us. Um, uh, so I'm going to pause. One question, yeah. uh, sorry. Hmm. Uh, one question about the PR uh, Wrangler Shadow Program. I'm assuming it consists of uh, reviewing PRs on the KA website repo. Uh, but supposing a PR 
uh, is like uh, contains something that I do not know about Kubernetes, uh, which are a lot of PRs on the project uh, when I saw them. Uh, am I still like able to uh, review them or to does this uh, shadowing consist of like uh, previous information on the PR so that you can effectively review them or something like that? That's a very good question. Thank you for asking. So uh, PR reviewing essentially boils down to two things, right? One is the technical aspect of the PR, in, in which case, you know, you are changing the technical content or uh, modifying uh, or updating them or updating it to reflect the latest uh, innovation. Uh, the other is actually the stylistic uh, part of it, wherein you have to follow certain um, rules while writing a particular document. Uh, we have certain um, style, we have certain style requirements in the casing, we have certain um, voice and tone requirements, which we adhere to when we write documents and blogs and um, a lot of uh, the content that you see on uh, kubernetes.io. So there are two aspects to the reviewing and approving part. So when we talk about uh, uh, the technical content updation that's normally submitted by people who are actively working on uh, Kubernetes and that might require a technical review from one of the um, other SIGs, maybe SIG Security or SIG Arch or SIG um, Node or something. So a technical review is always supplemented by a styl stylistic review. Now, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, you obviously can do both, uh, but uh, what SIG Docs normally looks after is the uh, qual qualitative review, which is whether it's adhering to our style guide, whether it's uh, sort of, um, you know, following the conventions that we assume uh, that we already have laid down in the, um, uh, you know, contributor guide. So th that's what we look at. Um, not to say that there are not technical people here. Obviously, a lot of us have learned the technology by using uh, the docs. Um, and we can also do the technical reviewing bit, but uh, mostly it boils down to qualitative reviewing if you are not well versed. So um, when you look at a PR um, as a shadow, um, what I would suggest um, um, as a shadow is first you talk to the pe uh, person who you are shadowing under, whoever it is, whether it's me or another approver and understand what they're looking at for uh, how they go through the PR reviewing and approving uh, schedule. And um, then you obviously go through the process of reading the style guide and reading the contributor guide to understand how it's all done because different uh, PRs and different, uh, uh, you know, uh, different requests have um you know, different branches that they must target. So localization PRs might target a different branch. Uh, your upcoming release PRs might target a different branch. So there are different aspects to it, which uh, you can only understand as and when you go through the process. But to answer your question, no, uh, it's not necessary for you to have a technical background, although it's appreciated if you do. Does that uh, clarify? Uh, no, it was perfectly <laughs> clarified. Thank you. So we focus like more yeah. on the content than what the content is about. Maybe. Yes. I mean, it's okay if you know more about the mm. technical parts of it as well. Uh, but if you don't, uh, the focus is mainly on ensuring that the content adheres to the style guidelines and the content guidelines that we've put out. Like whether it's, um, you know, introducing third-party content, whether it's uh, properly cross-link, stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Thank you. No worries. Um, and in a similar vein, we have uh, issue wranglers as well. So um, if you visited K website, you already know that there's a lot of um, issues that are uh, uh, that come in every day. And there are a lot of pending issues from before as well. So we've dedicated um, POCs every week to sort of uh, go through the issues, triage them, and assign them correct labels. So this week's uh, issue wrangler is Tim Bannister, um, and uh, he'll be taking care of labeling and um, you know, triaging the issues. Um, and next week's issue is Abby. Uh, so uh, she'll be the POC for labeling and triaging the issues that come in. And if there are any untriaged ones, she'll be responsible for that next week. 
And similar to the PR Wrangler shift rotor, we also have an issue Wrangler shift rotor, uh, which is available on our wiki. Both are linked on the agenda doc. Um, so I'm going to pause here and see if you have any questions, Arvind, or if not, I can move on to the next one. Um, there are no shadows for the issue Wrangler, right? No, not yet. Uh, primarily okay. because we've just started that role this year. And hmm. um, it's... It's still in the process of being fleshed out as a role. Uh, we've had great success with it, but we also want to make sure that, uh, you know, we have enough people to start with in the very first place. So, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, right. we it. don't have shadows yet. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go on to the next agenda item, which is the release uh, updates. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have anyone from the release team on this call, uh, since most of them are... Uh, Europe, US base. There are a few in India, but I'm not sure if they could make it to this call. Not India, but in Asia, sorry. So uh, there are a few from Asia, but I'm not sure if they could make it to this call. Uh, so we don't have any updates on them, uh, but th this will be filled retrospectively. That is after the call. And uh, if there's anything that needs our attention, they can also leave it as a comment on the Slack channel. Uh, if anyone's watching this recording after, uh, you know, it gets published on YouTube. Uh, and that brings us to the issues in PRs that um, um, I wanted to kind of flag. Um, we're coming up uh, with blog review guideline PR, um, not blog review guideline PR, but okay, blog review guidelines. We have them already, but we wanted to make them more... Um, we want to make them more useful to people who are actually uh, interested in reviewing uh, blogs for uh, sick dogs. Um, as you already probably know, um, Arvind, uh, uh, you, you're already doing a lot of blog reviewing and blog coordination in Cossack Contrabex. Similar to which we have uh, uh, blog reviewing and blog, uh, you know, writing in uh, sick dogs as well. So, this is um this is to aid people who are interested in doing this um, um on a more regular basis. So um there is a PR that uh, Ray Lahano, uh, one of our other coaches, has uh, you know submitted. And uh, there are a couple of comments on it. So if you think you are able to take a look, or if anyone who's taking this uh, who's watching this recording uh, can take a look that would be helpful uh, because we want to make this as uh, friendly and as, as as accessible to, you know, interested folks as possible. Uh, so that's the issues in PR split. And I'm going to pause here for a bit um, for any questions that anyone might have. Um, uh, one question, I think for Sikh country backs, we have this spotlight blog, which consists of interviewing uh, tech or uh, chairs of other Sikhs and then writing about their uh, experiences in the Sikh to new contributors. Uh, is there a similar kind of blog for website or uh, what other blogs uh, are in process for the uh, docs? That's a very good question. Thank you for asking. Uh, so uh, most of so the spotlight blog that you talk about that's also mirrored onto K website, uh, the Kubernetes.io, um, uh, you know, website. There is a mirroring of the content that you sub, uh, you know, submit or write as part of the spotlight blog onto K website. But uh, Kubernetes.io normally hosts uh a lot of the release blogs that is related to the Kubernetes releases. Uh, a lot of the feature blogs related to the technicalities of the features rela um, released every uh, cycle. Uh, sometimes they talk about how Kubernetes um, is employed, uh, not Kubernetes specifically, but like how a Kubernetes feature is employed specifically in a particular context, or uh, it's a deep dive into one specific feature uh, from like an outsider's perspective. So there are a lot of things that, deal with the more technical aspects of um, you know kubernetes rather than it being focused on a contributor perspective uh, kubernetes.dev which you correctly um, identified focuses on that uh, contributor perspective um, and spotlights the various uh, teams and uh, um, you know the various achievements by contributors etc 
um so the focus on the kubernetes blog uh, under kubernetes.io is more on uh, the user and uh, the technical side of things if that makes sense mm -hmm. right so it is written in collaboration between sig docs and the other six right? mainly sig release as you talked about not really. Uh, so Sig Release is one of the stakeholders, surely, because we work in co close collaboration uh, mm -hmm. during releases. But um, normally, uh, the feature blogs are written by the respective SIGs that are releasing the feature. For example, if it's a security-related enhancement, it's the it's SIG security that actually does it. Um, similarly, if it's um, something related to um, scheduling or... Um, cloud provider for example it's really it's mm -hmm. written by the respective sig or working group so it's not always release release does a lot of the coordination work but uh, essentially it is responsible for featuring only the release uh, like releasing only the um, uh, main release block every release and the feature blogs are normally written by the respective six which we help mm -hmm. review modify and uh, tailor to our style guidelines and content guidelines uh, okay got it perfect all right. Okay. So then I think the last bit, it's not a discussion or question, but uh, it's more a copy paste from the previous one, just in case someone's interested. Um, so there is a PR on uh, uh, K website that deals with uh, moving the localization readme files to their respective folders um, uh, so that, you know, instead of... Um, the website owners that's myself and the other co-chairs and uh, the tech leads only having access to approve and review prs the localization owners actually have permissions to make changes to the readme file without you know pinging one of us uh, so that's that's a, a thing in progress and uh, abby who is the localization sub project lead will be creating a pr um uh on policy notes and also uh you know uh, on creating branches in netlify so um you can go to the pr and uh view more about what this change is and um if you have any questions around this initiative or about one of the localizations or if you want to start a localization um new you can just uh you know, ask uh, questions on the localization Slack channel, which is hashtag sick dogs localization. Um, so yeah. Uh, and uh, there's also monthly meeting that we have on the first uh, Monday of every month. So there is also a forum there to ask any questions or uh, have your concerns dispelled. So yeah. Uh, are there any questions around this? Um. Not regarding uh, what you just discussed, but uh, on the point of localization, I came across this issue, uh, which was the use of AI tools to localize uh, content on the website. Uh, I think Abby was the one leading that. Uh, and I noticed there were no uh, uh, efforts to like uh, localize Hindi content, uh, sorry, content in to Hindi, are there any discussions around that going on, or is it already started yeah. or something like that? Uh, that's a very good question. I'm also the maintainer for the Hindi localization, so uh, there is uh, actually if you go to Kubernetes.io, we have the Hindi localization live, so you can just go to the website and uh, actually I'll just show you because I have time right now. Uh, so if you see here, there uh, on the right hand side, there's Bengali, Chinese, um, uh, uh, French, and if you see here, there's one in Hindi as well. Of course, it's not entirely complete, uh, because very few contributors voluntarily come up to contribute to a localization. So this is um, this is already live. Like the Hindi localization for Kubernetes.io is live. It's not complete again. Fair warning. So uh, we're always looking out for contributors. So if you're interested, hashtag Kubernetes-docs-hi is the Slack channel that you need to join. And, uh, you know, you can check out uh, the issues that are labeled as language uh, slash hi to see if there are any issues you can pick up. We have several. 
but um, if there are particular issues that you'd like picking up or if you like if you'd like to convert a particular page to hindi uh, that's also completely acceptable but you just need to check if it's already being worked on so that's that's the thing and the second thing is around lo use of localization uh, sorry use of ai tools to do localization which is being led by abby that's um, also uh, uh, an initiative we're working on in terms of like we're piloting it for very particular localizations and seeing if it works because um as you already probably are aware um uh, ai is a uh, catchphrase um and it does not really fulfill all requirements uh, so we need to sort of uh, see how well the tool that we've selected performs and how it actually works uh, when it comes to um, you know localizing um, the documentation from english to that specific set of languages so we've narrowed down the set of languages we're working on it and there's been a team that's already you know in progress but we've no updates primarily because um again there's there's a lot this this is an open source project there's a lot of things in flux so mm -hmm. um work is in progress for that specific endeavor but it's going at a very slow pace mm -hmm. uh does that answer the question yeah. that you were trying to convey yep yep uh, got it thank you okay don't mention and uh so the next one is around uh it, again this is not a discussion point or a question uh it's more around uh, uh you know uh inclusion of more languages and converting the kubernetes uh, uh documentation into more languages um in the absence of AI currently, because we do not have um, an AI tool narrowed down and it's still a WIP endeavor. So um, Doxy, which is the um, uh, Doxy team, which is the team that we're using on the Kubernetes website has released a left to right support, which allows us to sort of have uh, Arabic and other, uh, you know, uh, languages that use left to right writing conventions to um um you know use that particular uh, uh, way of writing when you can consider converting it to uh, that particular language so arabic team um is getting ready for this and uh, uh, patrice uh, may be able to uh, support this endeavor and if the google doxy issue is actually given here so if you want to have a look, uh, that's not specific to Kubernetes again. It's just a doxy issue, but uh, uh, you can check out uh, the uh, doxy issue for more details. So that's pretty much it from my end. Uh, unless you have questions, Arvind, about um, any of what we anything about what we've discussed so far. Um, not really. I think you've covered all of it. Uh, yep, not anything that comes to mind. <laughs> All right then. Um. So, uh, I think uh we can we can end this right here if you have no questions. Um. Unless you know you do, and uh, you can always ask them on uh Sig Docs channel or if it's a localization specific one, there's Sig Docs localization, and if um uh, it's the blog related one, there's Sig Docs blog as well. So mm -hmm. those are the three avenues you can get in touch, and uh, we'll be happy to help out. Perfect. I'll look at the PRs that you mentioned, mainly the blog review, and yep. see if I can help out there. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I hope you have a wonderful day. See you soon. Thank you. See ya.